Good afternoon, guys. Today we are going to elaborate an English proverb. English proverb goes like this: "I'm not the king, rather king maker." Most of you must have heard about this, but not without explanation or elaboration. Today, I'm going to elaborate and explain what does really mean, because. Most of the most of the people know about this, and most of people just uh, go around uttering, "I'm not the king, but a kingmaker," without explanation, without elaboration, without persuasion, without anything telling in detail what is the connotation, what is the meaning of this English proverb. I prepare four points to elaborate. This proverb. Point number one is: Don't be a king, but rather king maker. Being a king is a selfish thing. I try to be all I can, and eventually I can become a king. So I did every single thing for myself. Did not contribute in the development of human race, mankind, society, nation. I did not actually contributed anything in the life of others, but I just contributed every single thing that I could, I could achieve, I could amass in my own development. That is absolutely downright selfish thing to do. That is why this proverb actually emphasizes upon that: if you are going to be a king, you are going to be a king for yourself. But if you are going to a king maker, then you are going to make thousands of kings in your life. That is what the teachers must to remember. That is what the teacher must instill in their mind, bear in their mind that they are not the king, but they are king maker, and they should persistently, continuously, constantly, consecutively, turning their dead student into a scald. King, be a king maker rather than a king. But that philosophy of this problem has not actually awakened any teacher over here. They have their own domain, they have their own turf. They live in their own ego and vanity. They have their own intoxication of their position. Now. Teacher should not be like that. In Islam, it says the teacher is the parent, mother and father both. In Hindu religion, it says, "Guru Govind do no kare kaya na gupai." Guru Dev kar paap ki ke Govind dio batai. So it should be like the like the bonding of parents and progeny. There should not be any kind of Pride. There should not be any kind of ego. There should not be any kind of vanity. There should not be anything but just relation, absolutely casual relation, absolutely chaste, absolutely sacred relationship. Nothing else. Number two, <clears throat> becoming a king <clears throat> requires no efforts. If you want to be a king, you have to do one thing only: get birth in the family of, of the royal family, like those people who are born in Saudi family or Dubai family or Bahrain or Qatar or Kuwait. They automatically, congenitally, without making any kind of investment, without any kind of, without making any kind of efforts, they become king. So becoming king means only taking birth, <coughs> born in the king family. It doesn't take any efforts. Rather, making king requires tremendous efforts. You are actually taking a rough and a rogue stone, and you are chiseling off <clears throat> all the rough edges, and you are creating a beautiful statue, beautiful idol of gold or goddess. You have to chisel. You have to mold. You have to caress. You have to prune and groom someone to become a king, and that is a tremendous effort, tremendous endeavor, tremendous task. It doesn't come easy like being born in a 
king's family, the royal family. Charles became king a couple of months ago. He was just born. His son is going to become king because he's just born in the family. King, I mean, Charles' father, Philip, became king just because he was born. Kings don't make any kind of lousy effort, not even a one single lousy minute's effort to become a king. They don't ever write A, B, C, D, alphabets. They don't have to attempt to five questions. Nothing absolutely, positively, nada, nothing else, absolutely nothing to become king. But if you are going to make someone king, you have to. You have to make all gut-wrenching efforts to turn that dead person into a skirt. That is king-making. Number three. One king doesn't suffice. Multiple kings in a noble, is a noble concept. Having one, one king, like say for example, uh, Saudi Arabia has, watch what call it king. Now he's only the king in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> but some teacher thinks that I'm not the king, but I'm a king maker, that he is going to make a number of kings in the society, number of doctors, number of judges, number of scientists, number of economists, number of professors, and all of those will be king, multiple kings, number of kings, hundreds and thousands of kings one king can make. But this sitting king in the saddle is absolutely redundant person, living the sedentary, lousy life. Doesn't have to do anything at all. Kings don't do anything at all. There are people who wash their hands and the back, both. They don't do anything. Now, that is not the personality. That is not a person that is called personality cult. Foolish people are following the foolish people. Whole breed of foolish people. Absolute idiotic, nitwit, numb nuts. Following the numb nuts. Why? I don't know. How can you be so stupid that you follow the person who is just like you, bowing your head to the person who is just like you? I don't know why. Only the thing I can understand and I can say is stupidity. Worst kind of, absolutely worst kind of stupidity actually makes you to bow your head to other person who is just like you, whose, whose blood is red, Whose blood has four components like black, lead cell, white cell, hemoglobin, and the platelets. He goes to the toilet two, three times a day. He goes to urinate 10, 15 times a day. He is also getting dirty. His sweat is also dirty and filthy and a bit foul odor. Everything is the same, and still you believe him. Some kind of lesser God and above your precious head. Hell with those kind of philosophy, hell with these kind of beliefs. It's not a belief, it's not, it is not culture, it is not civilization, it is barbarism. It is primitive way to lead. Still you don't have any kind of credence in yourself, any kind of confidence in yourself that I should not bow my head to other person who is as dirty, as filthy, as bad looking as I am, but still, they don't understand because they are stupid. The definition of stupid is the one person who cannot understand anything in life, cannot fathom, cannot comprehend, cannot come full circle about any single thing, is stupid. Point number four is, literal king is a shame for the nation. Figurative kings are the blessing for the nation. The one king you have, King Salman or then Saudi Arabia or whatever his name is, is the same for the democracy. 2200 years ago, 2200 years ago, Socrates had given us the concept of democracy and after 2200 years later, we have not been able to fathom, comprehend, Come full circle, understand it. Democratic principles are the most sacred principles in the world. And still we select the king, still we select the prince, 
still be select the queen like a stupid dead animals absolutely dead animal animalistic mentality people who have no confidence in themselves absolutely inferior people who actually bow their head to other human beings so if you have one king in your nation it's a shame He's going to loot you. He's going to cheat you. He's going to punish you. He's going to exercise you. He's going to uh, uh, give you pain. He's going to cause uh, the perpetrate all kinds of massacre, the mayhem, and the massacres, and the murders. But if you have thousands of kings, like America, the country of kings, like Europe, the country of kings, but they are all figurative kings. They are king, but in education, in meritocracy, in aristocracy, in economy, in education, in philosophy, in thinking, in science and technology. They are the king of the world, <clears throat> not the sedentary king sitting in the saddle, eating all day long, growing fat, fatter, and the fat ass. That is the dumb, dumber, and the dumbest person. So, remember, I'm not the king. Don't try to be king, but rather be king makers. Oh, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for listening. See you again next time. Until then, God bless everyone on this beautiful, gorgeous, God-blessed planet. Amen.